Today, Dubey will tell us how circles work, and he'll demonstrate how little he knows about gravity. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 109. There are no fixed east or west points, just as there is no fixed south. The north central pole is the only proven fixed point on our flat earth, with south being all straight lines outwards from the pole, east and west being concentric circles at constant right angles 90 degrees from the pole. A westerly circumnavigation of Earth is thus going around with Polaris continually on your right, while an easterly circumnavigation is going around with Polaris always at your left. Proof 109, while at first glance may appear to relate to the flat Earth, in reality, Dubé is just telling us how concentric circles work. So, I guess he's right. If you travel east or west on a flat Earth map, or at least this one, you will do a complete circle. This does not, in any way, give evidence for a flat Earth. It only shows us how circles work. Proof 110 is the same as 109, just throwing in a reference to Magellan. 111. Since the North Pole and Antarctica are covered in ice and guarded no-fly zones, no ships or planes have ever been known to circumnavigate the Earth in north-south directions. The only kind of circumnavigation which could not happen on a flat Earth is north and south bound, which is likely the very reason for the heavily enforced flight restrictions. The fact that there is yet to be a single verified north to south circumnavigation of Earth serves as standing proof the world is not a ball. This proof is an outright lie. There are verifiable instances of people circumnavigating the Earth from pole to pole. Dubé and others will deny that this has occurred but incredulity is not evidence. In 1977, a Pan Am flight managed the trip. In 1982, Charles Bouton did the same thing. Dubé has to rely on lying for this proof. 112. The sun brings noon to every time zone as it passes directly overhead every 15 degree demarcation point, 24 times per day, in its circular path over and around the Earth. If time zones were instead caused by the uniform spinning of the ball Earth around the Sun, every six months as Earth found itself on the opposite side of the Sun, clocks all over Earth would have to flip 12 hours. Day would be night, and night would be day. The problem here seems to arise because Dubé doesn't know the definition of a day. Dubé thinks that a day is defined as a 360 degree rotation of the Earth. If this were true, then we would expect a 12 hour shift every six months. However, a day is not defined as a 360 degree rotation, but rather as 24 hours. This difference in how a day is defined is critical. A sidereal day, which is defined as a 360 degree rotation, only takes 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. Since the Earth is also revolving around the Sun at the same time that it is rotating, it means that if we were to define a day using 360 degree rotation, the sun would not be at the noon position at noon, but would instead be slightly off. What we do instead is define a day as 24 hours, and because of this, after 24 hours at noon, the sun is once again at the noon position. After 6 months, if we were to use sidereal days, we would in fact be off schedule by roughly 12 hours. Once again, Dubé demonstrates his lack of understanding for the model that he claims to be debunking. 113. The idea that people are standing, ships are sailing, and planes are flying upside down on certain parts of Earth, while others tilted at 90 degrees and all other impossible angles, is complete absurdity. The idea that a man digging a hole straight down could eventually reach sky on the other side is ludicrous. Common sense tells every free-thinking person correctly that there truly is an up and down in nature, unlike the everything is relative rhetoric of the Newtonian Einsteinian paradigm. If you wanted to, you could just dismiss this proof as an argument from incredulity, and we will. Dubé just has a hard time understanding that there is no universal down, and he thinks this proves the Earth isn't a globe. Proof 114 is the same as 113, just quoting someone else being baffled by gravity. 115. The existing laws of density and buoyancy perfectly explain the physics of falling objects long before knighted Freemason Sir Isaac Newton bestowed his theory of gravity upon the world. It is a fact that objects placed in denser mediums rise up while objects placed in less dense mediums sink down. 
To fit with the heliocentric model, which has no up or down, Newton instead claimed objects are attracted to large masses and fall towards the center. Not a single experiment in history, however, has shown an object massive enough to, by virtue of its mass alone, cause other smaller masses to be attracted to it, as Newton claims gravity does with the Earth, the Sun, Moon, stars, and planets. While Dubé and others want to believe that buoyancy and density can somehow replace gravity, they never provide any way to actually do the exchange. Gravity is not simply things fall down. Gravity has a whole set of predictable observations that cannot be made using density and buoyancy. Dubé could never predict the rate at which objects fall in a vacuum without needing to resort to gravity. Dubé could never predict the way in which moons orbit other planets without using gravity. Until Dubé can provide mathematical predictions for the motions of objects using buoyancy and density exclusively, this proof is just a bunch of buzzwords. Dubé also claims that there has never been an observation of a larger object exerting a gravitational pull on other objects. This is verifiably not true. The Cavendish experiment conducted in 1797 demonstrated this effect. The Cavendish experiment has also been repeated and refined over time. We also have examples of gravity affecting larger objects such as moons. The moons of Jupiter can be seen revolving around Jupiter as well as the moons of other planets. Dubé denies these observations not because they are not verifiable, but rather because they disagree with him. Proof 116 is the same as 115, just talking about other planets. Proof 117 is the same as 115, except talking about tides. Proof 118 is the same as 115 and talks about tides some more. Dubé also asks why ponds don't have tides because he doesn't understand how gravity works. And with that, we debunk 10 more proofs for why the Earth is not a spinning ball. Next time, Dubé will play some word games, talk about how people think he's an idiot, and talk a little bit more about the moon.